this episode, this happened. It's a nice trail of coolant there. Surprise, surprise. The cooling system broke. I'm somewhere in the middle of nowhere. I think it's Camp Verde. We're, I was headed on the way to Payson with Brad and Andrea. And uh, yeah. So basically this hose right there, and it goes from the expansion tank to the uh, water pump. It was just pissing coolant everywhere. And yeah, so now we're gonna try and fashion together a new hose using a generic hose I bought at O'Reilly's and some hose clamps. So uh, yeah, let's take this apart and see what we could do. All right, so we got the hose out, which wasn't too bad, but pissed coolant everywhere even more. So I'm sorry, environment. But uh, so the hose here has a giant slit in it, and this is where it was leaking out of. So we cut the hose up, trying to use the good part, but then the uh, where's the plastic bit that was here broke right off. It's this bit right here. So now we are trying to jerry-rig something together, and I got this hose from O'Reilly's, but this is way too stiff and not long enough. We need something a little more flexible. So uh, we're going to go to Napa now and try and see what they can hook us up with and see if we can get this thing back together. Napa was apparently closed, so we went to Ace, and they actually had some pretty good hose. It's pretty flexible. It's seems to be the right size and we got extra so now what I'm gonna do is I put on the remainder of the original hose so it fits over that nicely with the original hose clamp and then we're gonna basically attach this here with a connector right th right here bridge it together and then hopefully that'll work out just fine so let's see if it does all right so after a bit of swearing this is what I came up with so that's using the original bit of line there. It's using this connector, a bunch of hose clamps going through there. And that should connect to the water pump down there. So I'm going to put it together and uh, see if it doesn't leak. All right, so now we've cobbled together some hoses, some hose clamps, and it appears to be intact. So everything's back together. So now we're going to attempt to fill it with coolant and see if it doesn't blow up. Everything's back together. Now we are just added a bunch of coolant and now we're going to bleed the system and hopefully everything is fine. So, yeah, fingers crossed. So it's at temperature, it seems to be holding, fingers crossed, knock on wood, nothing's leaking out. It's all uh, nice and solid. My little ghetto fix seems to be holding for now. We'll see how long it holds for. So let's look at the temperature. My pixels are pretty shot, but you can tell it's at 105 it's holding steady Doesn't seem to be going up much past that. It's like 105 104. So I'm gonna call that a BAM I think we're done here So what I've done here is basically I fixed the cooling system problem using non BMW parts and literally one screwdriver And that was it. That's all I had a screwdriver and a set of pliers the ones that came with the car So that's that. Let's see if it works now when we drive it. Boom. So we made it out here. The car is not overheating yet. Fingers crossed, it's been a couple miles. It's super, super quiet. And that view, man, that view. Surprisingly, the coilovers are doing pretty well, even though the road here is really uh, not ideal. It's tucking a little on this side. Hashtag Stance Nation. <laughs> All right, so we'll keep driving it and see what happens. Well, it looks like I spoke too soon. As you could see by the puddle of coolant, things are not okay. Uh, so what happened is, uh, we're driving and then I suddenly hear the fan, the clutch fan making a lot of noise. And then before I know it, 
it's being really, really loud. So I'm like, okay, let's pull over. So we pull over, the fan quench is dead seized. And then I try to start it again, just you know, to diagnose it some more. And what do you know? You sh it's too bad I didn't have the camera here when it happened. This clutch fan exploded. Second time this car has had a clutch fan explode in like a few months. That's why I bought it for so cheap. It took out some of the fan shroud, and it definitely took out the radiator. The radiator is leaking from like ten different places, so now we need a new radiator. And you can see clutch fan pieces everywhere. There's one here. There's one here. There's one there. They're, they're everywhere. And then there's another one over here. And there's one all the way over here. That might be actually a piece of the fan shroud. That's pretty impressive. And you can see a bunch of them down there. It was raining. <clears throat> that, was a, that was an experience. So we're gonna try and figure out how to get this. We're gonna see if we can maybe get AAA to a town and fix it there or something. Or just leave it somewhere for a couple days and come back with parts. We need to leave a note on it. All right, so we'll uh, we'll figure something out and I'll catch up with you then. Going up. It's now Wednesday. It's been a couple of days since this car broke down near Payson and I had it towed. The original plan was to tow it from uh, wherever we were to Payson, which is about 50 miles away or so. But then the tow truck driver came and he said that with the AAA package that my friend had, it covered up to 100 miles per tow. So it, we figured it would be kind of silly to tow it to Payson and then have to come back to Payson another day to fix it. So we've, we looked up and saw how far it was to Phoenix and we found out that my friend's house in Peoria here is uh, was only 105 miles, so it cost almost nothing to tow it all the way down here, and that's exactly what we did. Right now I have some tools with me, I have lights with me, and we're gonna tackle th this thing and uh, get it back on the road. We've got a new radiator, ready to go. So now we just gotta take this old one out and put the new one in, do the whole cooling system bleeding dance, and then uh, get on out of here. At least that's the plan. The radiator's out now. That took like 15 minutes total to get all that out. I'm getting way too good at this. So here's the fan shroud, or rather what's left of it. See, it's all torn up there, and it's all torn up over there. But uh, we're gonna try and zip tie, duct tape, whatever this thing back together for now. Um, there's the overflow hose, nothing wrong with that. Here's what seized up, the uh, fan clutch. You can see the remnants of the fan blades and there's more fan blades still coming out of the engine bay on the ground. This came from a 2001 parts car. And you know what I see? I see it says 01 right there. So it looks like this is an original fan clutch from a car that had like 190,000 miles before I popped it into this car. So probably not the best idea. And there's the radiator. As you might remember from the last video, this radiator was brand new when we put it in. Like brand new, look how beat up it is. The sad thing is that these plastic end pieces, which normally break, they're fine. What got damaged in this case was the actual radiator itself. You could see all the little dents and cuts that the uh, clutch fan put in there. So it's, uh, it's pretty extreme, like this one right there. And right there you see a box with a new radiator, which is the exact same $100 radiator I put in, just like a new one. I mean, I'm not gonna spend any actual money on this car, guys, come on. So let's get that in there and uh, start putting stuff back together. Shout out to my friend for letting me do this in her neighborhood with the HOA. As you can see here, I've got the new radiator in. That took even less time than taking the old one out. And the upper radiator hose there is loose so that I can fill it from there because that's, an, that's a nice trick actually to fill up a new radiator, minimize how many air bubbles are in there. And right down here is uh, the newly repaired fan shroud featuring the finest in duct tape craftsmanship. As you can see here, it has uh, more structural rigidity than it did when it was new, I bet. Look at all that duct tape. Okay, so now we've got the new and improved fan shroud installed with all the duct tape magic. Everything else is installed and connected. Bleed screws open, expansion tanks open, so now we're gonna start filling coolant in from the upper radiator hose. 
until that expansion tank is full and then we'll add some more in the expansion tank and that's basically just how the bleeding process works eventually bubbles will start to come out of the bleed screw and then eventually after that it'll be just nothing but solid coolant and that's why I have a, a pan under the car to catch that once it's uh, just coolant running out that's how you know you've bought the system completely out of air so it's pretty important to do this with the new radiator lots of air in there otherwise you overheat all right so now we're bleeding the uh, cooling system by running the car with the bleeder valve open here you can kind of see here see at this point i think we've gotten most of it out because uh see there's there's almost no bubbles coming out i was just i squeezed the hose there but you yeah, know it looks like we're pretty good so we're gonna shut the bleed valve now and uh oh wait see there we go some more air came out so we're not done bleeding yet Basically the idea is to get all the air out of the system so it's not trapped because if you've got air in the system, it's just not going to cool very well. So I'm going to finish doing that and then uh, we'll hop inside the car and maybe take it for a spin. Alright, so the coolant's been bled now we're driving on our way home. The uh, My clusters are all messed up but we're at 105. We're doing okay so far so I'll check in in a little bit and see how we do. Okay, status report. I've been on the highway for about, you know, five, six miles now. So far it seems to be good. The uh, the pixels are all garbled up, but I know what they're actually reading. It's right now it's actually, believe it or not, saying 105, not 106. It's just the way the pixels are. So it's hovering between, you know, 105 to 108. It goes up, you know, 106, 107, 108. Then it goes back down, 107, 106, 105. So it's definitely regulating, it's doing its thing. I think it's running a little hotter than before because of the lack of a clutch fan, but maybe there just might be some air in the system. I we I only bled it really well once, and it's telling me that I also have some low coolant. So I think once I get this home and let it cool down, maybe tomorrow morning I'll add some coolant and then maybe bleed it a little more, and then all will be right with the world. Fingers crossed, we might just make it home in this thing. My friend Brad is behind me in the um, in the in the 540i wagon. So, yeah. All right, we'll catch up in a bit. Okay, so we made it home safely. No problems there, no warning lights. Uh, the car ran, you know, nice and steady, 105, 106 Celsius, which is pretty good considering it has no clutch fan, and I think I'm just gonna run it without the clutch fan for now, because it's pretty cold outside. It's like in the 50s, 40s at night, and then in the daytime it's only like 65, 70. So I could definitely get away with it at least until the summer and I'm pretty sure I'm not going to have this thing around by summer or it'll be in pieces by then. Which leads me to my next point. Um, I'm probably going to part this car out at some point just because I want the manual in the wagon over there. I don't know if you can see it in the dark but I want the manual in the wagon and this car has some good parts that I could grab off of it so I don't know maybe even the engine has less miles but I don't know I'm still thinking about that. Anyways, so that's pretty much it for this episode, you know, we've uh, pretty much done everything. We've gone on an adventure, broken down, fixed it, broke it down again, and then fixed it again, and then gotten home. So uh, I guess that'll be it for this episode. So again, thanks, thanks for watching, you know, uh, like, comment, subscribe, and uh, stay tuned for more stuff. Thanks.